Don't you hate it when you're writing and uh, you, you hit this? Yeah, I know, it's a semicolon. But when was the last time you even used it? It certainly seems like we should be using it a lot. I mean, look at it right there on your keyboard. VIP seating. Take that, dollar sign. How do you even use this thing? Think of your sentence as traffic on a road. A period breaks it into different segments, like a red light. A comma is like a green light. It may slow traffic down a little, but it's not gonna change the speed dramatically. And a yellow light causes traffic to hesitate for a moment to give traffic a little bit of room to just breathe. A semicolon can break a list-like sentence up into several smaller sections. They stay more closely associated than separate sentences would. If two short sentences refer to the same subject, they can be joined up with a semicolon connect the first part of a sentence with another clause that's closely related to it, okay, without using a conjunction. But semicolon should never go before coordinating conjunctions, like and, but, or, or so. That's a comma spot. Where did this weird punctuation move come from? You can thank the Roman Navy. Early Romans had a phrase, hasten slowly. When writing its phrase out, it was represented by an anchor above a dolphin as in slow down like a dolphin does among the anchors. In the 15th century, Venetian printer Aldus Manutius stylized the ancient symbol and adopted it as his printer's mark. Only he was using it as an abbreviation. As the printing press spread literacy through the 15th century, punctuation marks became standardized among writing. Playwright and poet Ben Jonson is credited as the first noble English writer to use the semicolon systematically in his work. He was known for relying heavily on quotes of earlier writers. Many among them were protégés and fans of Minutius, who happened to keep the Venetian's classic mark alive. Semicolon use surged over the next 200 years. Then, the 20th century hit, and the semicolon started to disappear. What happened? In a 1993 study for Applied Linguistics, Paul Bruthio studied punctuation marks in writing manuals from the 16th century through the 20th. Ruthio concluded that a shift from spoken to written words for communication appeared to be responsible for its rise, but a trend towards simplified sentences led to its downfall. Another emerging technology may have hammered a nail into the semicolon's coffin, the telegraph. Punctuation marks cost just as much as a letter, so short lines were more profitable to send, especially across the Atlantic, when words could cost about $5 each. Anti-semicolon sentiment became common in writers as well. Despite all that, semicolons have discovered new purposes in modern life. Early emoticons gave it widespread usage. Programming languages adopted the semicolon to indicate the end of a statement. And if you've seen someone with a tattoo of a semicolon, it's taken on a new purpose for them. Through Project Semicolon, the punctuation is a symbol for suicide survivors who could have ended their lives, but chose not to end the sentence just yet. So despite its changing definition, this little punctuation mark isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Its prominent position on the keyboard is well-deserved. There are people who rely on it every day for grammar, programming, or support.